Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Vlad Rock. Vlad is the Executive Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of Dick Sporting Goods, a greater than $10 billion revenue retailer of sports apparel. Vlad is a former athlete, having been an Olympic soccer player in years past. So in addition to his focus on technology, he brings an experiential aspect to his leadership at Dick Sporting Goods. He's a former Chief Technology Officer of Merck and has held leadership roles at Nike, the Walt Disney Company, and Wyndham Worldwide, among other roles he's played. Vlad, welcome to Technovation. Great to speak with you today. Well, thank you for having me, Peter. Glad That's to be a, here. It's a pleasure. Well, I thought I'd begin with your role as Chief Technology Officer, Vlad. You, you no doubt know a lot of CTOs, and in knowing a lot of CTOs would recognize that that's a role that translates very differently in different organizations. So I thought we would, uh, to, to set context, give you a chance to talk a bit about your purview as CTO. Sure. Well, I have a privilege to lead a team of about 1,000 technology professionals with about 700 or so the roles being internal. Um, and we are actually helping solve some of the very, very complex industry problems. And I, I, I say that because those problems come from quite a bit of scale that, that we face every day from 870 plus stores to five distribution centers to 1600 retail partners that we work with to 150 million athletes and one, 1 million SKUs and 1.5 billion website visits. So you, you get the point. There's a, there's a lot going on there. And as you permutate and try to solve for how do you understand the marketplace? How do you serve the athletes? Um, how do you support all of our teammates? There's a lot there. Um, we actually do this through all disciplines from product management to user experience design to engineering across all of our business domains. And and we sit at the table with all those leaders and have a very active seat and shaping the business model and also then bringing that to life. So, so we have a full gambit, a lot on our plates and a lot of exciting work to, that we do these days. Certainly sounds that way. Thank you for that overview. And I know, Vlad, from our past conversations that from a strategy perspective, you think about things as uh, inward facing aspects to your plans and outward facing aspects to your plans. And I wonder if you could take a moment and describe, first of all, what you mean by those, uh, and then also maybe some examples of each of those, if you would. Sure. I mean, there is a aspect of what we do that requires basics or fundamentals. And, and when we talk about mastering fundamentals, there are the inward facing strategies that, that we have for ourselves. And so when you think about talent, when you think about ways of working, partnering with business, um, creating a scaled foundation within technology, and then creating a culture, um, those are the five things that are at the forefront of us mastering fundamentals. So in there, when you think about talent, particularly um, how we focus on career development, how we actually create the culture of one team is a massive, massive focus. And so there are specific tactics and metrics actually that come with that um, that, that help us focus. Um, similarly, the ways of working, we're in a very, very modern way of working uh, on one end, um, which is a lean product management. On the flip side, we're, we're learning every day because doing this across omni um, channel, across athlete expectations and all teammates, there's a lot of planning and execution that comes into play. So there's a constant. Was, so those are some of the examples of internally facing um, five strategies that we have. And as it comes to the outward facing, which is what our athletes and our teammates, and by athletes, those are our customers, and by, by teammates, those are employees inside uh, DSG. Um, we obsess, by the way, over um, athletes and teammates. And, and on the athlete side, technology and our data around the athletes, so we can personalize, so we can serve them, um, we, can, we can address their needs across channels. And then on the teammate side, um, we want him to become trusted advisors. And, and there's an advisor just knowing what particular product is in, within the sporting goods. And there's a whole nother level advisory when we can help you learn the sport, improve in the sport, be fitted in the sport. So there's a lot in, as far as technologies that, that lead to that. And then there's plenty of Omni capabilities that are seamless, and we've led the way in many ways. And some of these capabilities in the industry are continuing to innovate there. So that's a big part of our strategy there. And the mobile app and a mobile platform being being at the forefront of that. Um, 
a lot is uh, anybody that's in retail deals, especially with anything that involves fashion or or sports or combination, um, solving the problem of demand sensing and demand planning is a significant problem when you look at the entire um, population of, of athletes, the number of categories in sports, the number of products and SKUs and everything else. So that is a space for us that they were uh, heavily focused on in one of our big strategies. And then lastly, which is one of the more um, exciting things that, that we talk about these days is this whole ecosystem that we're creating around transforming sport. Um, and that's the next generation experiences we're establishing in our stores, where our stores are no longer just a traditional retail store, they're destinations. And so what we are doing, I'll give you an example in golf as a category, and, and you can imagine this, this um, shaping in all other categories, if it's baseball or soccer or anything else, we're actually putting in a IoT and, and a sensing technology that allows you to fully understand the body movement in the golf swing. Um, we're connecting that with the, the technology that tracks what happens with the club and the ball afterwards. We understand your ground movement. We're able to fit you into equipment. We're able to ultimately equip you. Uh, with the best equipment, we're able to connect with your statistics um, um, outside of the store and ability to look at that entire what we call the athlete 360 construct um, that we have. And so how we then learn from that as, as an athlete and how we improve, how do we come back for more data? How do we create this platform of sports that allows us to do that is, is a huge focus area for us as a, as a company and as a technology organization. Very interesting, Vlad. Thank you so much for that overview uh, on all so many different aspects of your strategy and very compelling about these new areas that you, where you've gone beyond what, what uh, Dick Sporting Goods has traditionally been known for and really enhanced customer experience at the same time. Uh, just a brief aside, I mentioned in the intro that you were a very serious athlete uh, you know, in years past. And I wonder to what extent has that colored the way in which you think about this? You, you, you were not just a, you know, a job, somebody who's a athlete by virtue of, of jogging so often or, or going on a, a weekend bike ride. You're somebody who, who uh, operated at a very um, elite level. And so I would imagine that in addition, of course, to your, your, your expertise in technology, your, your areas of uh, understanding of the athlete's experience must also come in as a, as a handy weapon as you contemplate innovation for the company. Is that fair? It is. I mean, it's absolutely ingrained in, in my DNA to, to wake up and think about sports and doing that for a living um, for what we do in technology is just a whole nother uh, dimension. And what's, what's really fun about our environment, is we have a lot of athletes at different levels that wake up and obsess about sport. And so that's that's what makes us go. That's what makes us innovate. That's what makes us obsess about other athletes uh, and teammates. So it's a it's a really a culture where it's a collegiate. Uh, it's very um, internally focused as one team and very competitive as we face other teams. So that's the other part of our DNA. Yeah. And you talked a lot about experience, uh, cus, uh, both, both um, uh, the, for, in terms of the athletes that you're serving uh, but also your teammates as well. And I'd be interested in your perspective on that relationship, you know, it, it, between those things that you're doing to enhance the experiences of, of your, your, your customers, ultimately the athletes, but also at your colleagues as well, um, your teammates. H how do you think about the interrelationship about uh, the ways in which technology can be brought to life to, to impact in positive ways, both aspects of that? No, it's a, it's a, Great question. It's a topic that I think a lot of companies are are, are trying to um, correlate. Uh, the, the, and there is studies that you can you can look at over and over and see direct correlation that when the customer is happy, employee is happy. When employee is happy, customer is happy. And we obsess about athletes and teammates at the same time. And what's also happening in this whole world of evolution around data and connections that you can establish through data and experiences, um, there is a need to create technology that serves both at the same time. So when our athlete shows up with the mobile app in store, with the in-store mode, how our teammate supports them with their app 
uh, in that moment is, is an example of that. I talked about trusted advisors and helping athletes be a better golfer, understanding athletes' um, interaction with technology and a teammate with technology uh, going after the same goal is, is, is a paramount for us. And so we actually have inside the organization um, product teams that are focused on the athlete experience, but we equally have the product teams that are focused on teammate experiences. And we treat them exactly the same. We look at them through the same lens. We invest in a similar vein. So those are those are big things that are yielding results. And then ultimately those those teammates on the floor and those teammates in distribution centers, those teammates that are supporting our our um, e-commerce are are whenever they are happy, the athlete gets happier. So that's a that's a big part of our our vision and strategy. Like that. That's a that symbiosis makes a lot of sense. I also wanted to ask you about the ecosystem uh, that brings all that you've described to life. Uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, represents a, a journey outside of the traditional knitting of the organization to new levels of experience and value and interaction um, with, with uh, so many people now. And I can only imagine that bringing that all together with the data components associated with it, other technical details that are necessary to breathe life into the plans you've described, it must uh, uh, require an ecosystem, not only of, of the people you have internally, people who are uh, experts in these fields, but also outside of the organization as additional sources of, of insight and inspiration as well. Can you talk a bit about how you think about the broader ecosystem that you're curating? Sure. We're actually very fortunate to have um, few forces around us that help us continuously innovate. One is internal culture. I mean, we're very, very innovative, very flexible, very nimble. Um, we have, I mentioned 1600 partners from Nike to Adidas to Under Armour to North Face to um, many, many others who uh, demand more from themselves as well as us. Uh, in the interest of the athlete. And so the way we ideate with them and our recent partnership that was announced with Nike was, was a result of that type of ideation and collective thinking of how do we create that platform of sports moving forward. Um, and then there's the rest of the industry and the rest of the ecosystem around us that VCs and, and startups are bringing to the table that are pushing our thinking on what's, what's possible. And when you intersect all of this with the Industry Revolution 4.0 and what's happening to all of us uh, every day that that uh, currently we're seeing and things that are going to become mainstream pretty soon. These are the things that that are pushing our thinking every day, and it is a part of our innovation model. It's not one dimensional; it's actually multi dimensional, um, and it's not just about store. It's not just about online experience. It's not just about um, a specific moment, it's it's all of that collectively. So we think about the experience as an ecosystem. We think about the business model as a connected tissue across things. So those are those are all the things that are they're making our environment quite interesting and exciting to actually innovate in and be part of. That's excellent. I, I also wanted to ask you now that as you look to the future, um, what are some of the trends or ideas that excite you that you think are going to impact the way in which all of us interact with an organization like Dick Sporting Goods? Sure. I mean, the, the I, I, I keep using the term athlete uh, centricity, and it is at the core of a lot of where we see the future. Um, and so when you think about ability to personalize the experience when athlete shows up online or when athlete comes into the store, um, there's levels of personalization. There's a, uh, you, can, you can expect some basic things that I think many are doing right now, which is recognizing who you are and offering a specific product that, that may be relevant to you. Uh, we can also surprise and delight you, which is a whole nother level of how do we recognize what you might need uh, all the way up to how do we make you a better athlete? And so if I go back to uh, the example of golf, or if I take an example of, of baseball, of where you can come in into our store and our batting cages and fully understand and assess the um, how do you move and swing against the professionals, against your last swing, uh, what you can do, um, that that personalization on what you do next and the best next step for you as a as an athlete, regardless of your level, is is huge for us. So I, I see us 
innovating. I see us pushing the boundaries there and I see us connecting the tissue that is not connected anywhere else. And, and I, I explained sports um, to people in a similar way in the way healthcare is being done. You go to all the specialists, you go to different charts, you get to different views, and none of that is connected. And when you ask somebody, what is your health like? Um, you got to go to many different places to realize that. And that's kind of what happens in sports um, these days. And we have a unique opportunity to connect all that. So that's one area. Um, I would say the, the things that we are really now experimenting around are the, the whole IoT and sensor uh, based things and ability to connect the dots between the video analytics to RFID as an example and understanding of athletes' behavior all the way to the products that they're interested in, the products they're trying, the, the optimization that happens on what matters from a style color um, to how do we optimize the, the back of house and front of the house. There's a lot of innovation that's happening there that, um, and frankly, the whole face recognition and what's happening in that world is, is going to change how you check out, how you um, support uh, a particular challenge and initiative. There's a lot there that that is pushing our thinking. And the last one, I would say, is the the quantum computing. I think uh, while it feels like it's out there, or like it feels like it's we've got a ways to go before we uh, hit the mainstream, um, the type of problems we'll be able to solve from the whole demand sensing and demand planning side in the moment, uh, recognizing and categorizing and, and helping athletes do their best. Um, there's a whole nother world that that's exciting. Uh, I think that may sound a little futuristic out there, but I also think that that's going to come at us faster than anybody realizes, in, in my opinion. Yeah, very interesting. What a compelling view or, or lens into what you see coming around the corner. Well, Vlad Rock, thank you so much for taking time with me today, sharing a bit of your perspectives uh, as uh, the Chief Technology Officer of Dick Sporting Goods, some of the really remarkable things that you and your team are working on to enhance the experiences, uh, both of your teammates, your colleagues, as well as uh, the the athletes who are your customers as well. It's been a great conversation. It's my pleasure, and uh, thank you for having me.